Okay, so um, today we'll be looking at amoeba. Amoeba, we are coming to talk about life processes in some lower organisms. And today we'll concentrate more on amoeba. Amoeba. At the end of the lesson, we would, uh, or, or the lesson overview, we're going to talk about structure of amoeba, the mode of reproduction in amoeba, and um, uh, sorry, mode of nutrition in amoeba, reproduction in amoeba, and then osmo regulation in amoeba. At the end of the class, you are supposed to you should be able to describe the structure of amoeba and then explain their life processes in amoeba. Now, let's talk about the structure of amoeba. And um, amoeba is a protist, okay? It's normally a unicellular organism. When we're looking at cells, we said cells can be unicellular or multicellular. Unicellular organisms are organisms that have one cell, and then multicellular have two or more, or let's say multiples of cells. So when we take amoeba, amoeba is a protozoa, okay? And it is microscopic. Microscopic in the sense that it can only be viewed under a microscope. So amoeba is in unicellular and then can only be viewed under a microscope. And basically amoeba lives in ponds, lakes, fresh water or streams. Or you can even find amoeba on surfaces of stones. Now, when you look at the structure, let me go to this slide. This is how amoeba looks like. This is the structure of amoeba. Amoeba basically has a, an irregular shape. You can't tell the shape of amoeba, okay? Amoeba doesn't have a fixed shape. It has an irregular shape. So this is how the shape on, of an amoeba looks like. And if you look at the characteristics or the features of amoeba, we can find uh, the nucleus. This is the nucleus, looking at where the arrow is pointing at. So this is the nucleus. We can find the contractile vacuum. We can find the pseudopodia. All these things are the pseudopodia. These are the pseudopodia. All these are pseudopodia. So, uh, we have the pseudopodia. We also have the food vacuum. Here's the food vacuum. We have the cytoplasm. I told you that cytoplasm is an organism in which all other organelles are embedded in. So these are the structures that, these are the features that makes up what um, amoeba, okay? Now, when you view this structure under a microscope, it's, um, it looks like a jelly-like tiny structure. When you view this structure under a microscope, this is how it looks like, very tiny, okay? Very tiny. Now, when you take the pseudopodia of the amoeba, this. The pseudopodia of the amoeba is what allows the amoeba to move. So pseudopodia helps in movement in amoeba. Now, pseudopodia doesn't only help in movement, but it also allows the amoeba to engulf food. When we're looking at a uh, movement of substances into and out of the cell, we made mention of bulky transport, whereby we, we mentioned phagocytosis and then, um, what again, exocytosis, okay? So the pseudopodia of the amoeba is what allows the amoeba to engulf food or to ingest food into the system. Now we talk of the cytoplasm, as I said earlier, cytoplasm allows, it, that is a space in which all other organelles are embedded in. So you can see that the nucleus, the contractor vacuum, mitochondrion, blah, 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 are all found in the what? cytoplasm. Now, when we talk of the nucleus, of course, you and I know that the nucleus is the organ that carries what? Genetic material. Yes. And um, um, the, the, the main body of the amoeba, okay, can be put into three divisions, or there are three parts or three components that makes up the what? The body of the amoeba. Now, these components include the, um, the components include, we have the 
membrane okay we also have the cytoplasm and we have the what the nucleus i don't know if you are following if there's any question you want to ask as i said earlier just raise your hands and then i'll ask you to unmute yourself so now i'm saying that the amoeba is made up of what the, the body of the amoeba has three main parts we have the plasma membrane or you say the membrane we have the cytoplasm and we also have the what the nucleus okay now when we take the plasma the when we take the plasma membrane the membrane see look at where the cell membrane is this is the cell membrane okay so the cell membrane is the outer covering of the what of the organism so the outer covering of the organism which is the cell membrane the cytoplasm here what you are seeing inside it is also a, another division of the body and then we also have the nucleus the nucleus also makes up another division of the body okay now the plas the, the plasma membrane or in other words the cell membrane is normally elastic and it is semi permeable well, let me say it is permeable permeable in the sense that it allows movement of substances into and out of the amoeba Okay, that is why it is what selectively permeable. Selectively means that it, it allows what the organism needs to enter the system and also allows uh, things that are not useful to the organism to move out of the system. So basically, the cell membrane is what permeable, okay, therefore allowing things such as carbon dioxide to move out of the system or out of the organism and also allow oxygen into the organism allows water to go in and out i mean control the movement of water in and out of the what of the system okay now that is basically more of the what the cell membrane let's come to the cytoplasm okay the cytoplasm the cytoplasm of the amoeba I want you all to look at the structure I am showing on the screen, okay, so that you can follow what is going on. Now, the cytoplasm of the um, amoeba, okay, can be differentiated into um, two portions, which are the ectoplasm and the endoplasm, okay. The, as I'm saying this again, okay, the cytoplasm is differentiated into two, two parts, ectoplasm and endoplasm. Ecto means that outside, endo means inside. So if you look at the, I mean, the structure you are seeing very well, if you look in there, you realize that uh, within the amoeba, there are some dot, 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 dot inside. And then the outer part too, where the, the pseudopodia is showing you can also the place that have the dot 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 is the endoplasm and then outside the dot 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 is the what ectoplasm i am not talking about the cell membrane look at where the cytoplasm is showing if you look at the diagram the cytoplasm you realize that the dot wherever that you can see the dot 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 dot, dot, dot makes up the what the endoplasm and then outside here, where my arrow is pointing, the outside here, outside here, the space without the dot dot, space without the dot dot, and the what? Ectoplasm. Now, the ectoplasm forms the outer layer of the uh, amoeba. I'm taking it again. The ectoplasm, ecto, outside. So the place without the dot, 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 dot shows the outside part of the cytoplasm. And this ectoplasm is just after the what? The cell membrane. The cell membrane is the overall outer covering. But the ectoplasm is the first layer you will see without the dot, dot, before the endoplasm is the one with the dot, dot. So I'm saying that the ectoplasm forms the outer layer which is quite thin and it lies just beneath or just after the what the cell membrane okay basically the ectoplasm serves as a supporting tissue for the what for the amoeba the site the ectoplasm serves as a supporting tissue for the amoeba we are trying to explore the structure of amoeba we are looking at how amoeba looks like okay 
Now, when we come to the endoplasm, which is the inner part of the cytoplasm, where you can see the dot, 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 dot. So I'm saying that the endoplasm is made up of, um, the endoplasm is within the ectoplasm. Are you okay? The endoplasm is within the ectoplasm. Now, when you take the endoplasm, which is the inside or the inner part of the cytoplasm, that endoplasm also has two layers, okay? The endoplasm also has what? Two layers. And these two layers are called the plasmogel and the plasma soul. Okay, the two layers that makes up the endoplasm are the plasmogel and then there was the plasma soul. Okay, now the plasmogel is um, the first layer which is outside, and then the plasma soul is the inner layer of the endoplasm. I don't know if I'm making sense. I'm taking it again. The endoplasm, which is the inner layer of the cytoplasm consists of two layers called plasma soul and plasma gel, okay? This, the plasma gel is the outer layer of the endoplasm. And then the plasma soul is the inner layer of the endoplasm. Okay, now, in general, the endoplasm of the amoeba, okay, makes up or consists of what? The various organelles which are found in the what, amoeba. What are organelles? When we're looking at cells in core biology and even elective biology, we said organelles are membrane-bounded structures that performs what? Specific functions. Examples of organelles, we have what? Nucleus, mitochondrion, Golgi body, lysosome, blah, 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 etc. So I'm saying that the endoplasm of the amoeba consists of these various organelles, or this is the part in which the various organelles are embedded in or can be found. So that's basically something about what the cytoplasm. Of course, so if you look at the structure I'm showing you, the cytoplasm, you can find the food vacuum. Food vacuum is the vacuum in which when the amoeba uses the pseudopoda to engulf the food, it enters the food vacuum. It is in there that enzymes act on the food to break down the food into smaller particles for the amoeba to what, um, absorb, to get nutrients that it was, needs. You can also see a structure like the contractile vacuum. Contractile vacuum is, is there to regulate osmoregulation, or it is there to function as an osmoregulatory organ. Okay, it regulates uh, water and salt content in the body. So contractile vacuum are there. To serve as organ that allows what um, um osmoregulation in the amoeba okay and basically the nucleus as i said earlier the nucleus is what uh, contains the genetic materials that allows what uh, information to be transferred from parents to offspring okay so basically, this is how the, the, the structure of amoeba um, is. That's the structure of the amoeba. Now let's look at nutrition in amoeba. Nutrition in amoeba. When we talk of nutrition, we know that nutrition is a process whereby organisms obtain food. They don't only obtain the food, but they also make use of the food that they have had obtained. Okay, so anytime I eat, I am not only eating for eating sake, but the body should be able to make use of the food that we took in. Okay, so amoeba, which is also a living organism, um, has its way of feeding or has its way of obtaining food and making good use 
of the food. After this slide, I'll be showing you a video on how amoeba uh, feeds or obtain their food. Now, we are saying that the mode of nutrition in amoeba is heterotrophic. And we all know what heterotrophic nutrition is. I told you that heterotrophs are organisms which are not capable of making their own food, but they depend on already prepared food to obtain what? Energy. So heterotrophs, you and I are examples of heterotrophs. We cannot make our own food. Making our own food doesn't mean cooking bamboo in the kitchen or pounding fufu in the kitchen, no. Making your own food means that using sunlight and combining with it with chlorophyll to produce raw cassava, okay? You and I know that we are animals and that animals don't have chlorophyll. Therefore, we are not able to trap sunlight to manufacture our own food. So we are what? Heterotrophs. Same applies to amoeba. Amoeba is an heterotroph. It is not capable of making its own food. So what it does is that it feeds on what other organisms. It feeds on already prepared food in order to obtain energy to survive. Okay. Now, if we are to go through the stages on how amoeba is able to feed, any, not only amoeba, even with human beings, when we are going through the stages of feeding, okay, or nutrition, the first stage of nutrition is what? Ingestion. Ingestion is when you obtain the food. You get the food and introduce the food into your mouth. That is ingestion. Inject. Put something. Inject the bamboo. Put the bamboo in your mouth. So the first process of um, nutrition is what? Ingestion. After you have place the food in your mouth. What then happens to the food? The food must break down into smaller particles, okay? Because when the food is in larger particles, it cannot be absorbed into the bloodstream because they are too big. So after you've taken the food into your mouth, the food must break down. And the process of breaking down the food into smaller particles is termed as digestion. Same applies to what amoeba. Amoeba ingests the food. How does amoeba ingest the food? Amoeba ingests its food by the use of what? Pseudopodia. When I started the slide, I told you that pseudopodia is there to help the amoeba move. It doesn't only help amoeba in movement, but it also allows the amoeba to what? Um, capture food or engulf the food. So the amoeba uses its pseudopodia to engulf the food, okay? Now, when the food is being engulfed by the amoeba via the pseudopodia, it then enters the food vacuum, okay? In the food vacuum, there are enzymes. These enzymes help in the breakdown of those food, okay, into smaller particles to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Are you okay? Now, mind, mind you, um, in amoeba, amoeba is a unicellular organism. Amoeba is a single-celled organism. Amoeba is a lower organism. Therefore, it doesn't necessarily need any specialized structure for absorption. They just absorb through the cell membrane, okay? I told you that uh, when you're looking at more cellular unicellular organisms, I told you that we must say organic because of our structure. Or when you're looking at diffusion osmosis, we said the surface membrane is what a, a, a factor that aids in what diffusion. You and I, our surface membrane is too large. Therefore, because we are complex organisms, we cannot absorb food through our membrane because diffusion can only take place when the membrane, the surface membrane, is large enough. But we, we are too big, so we have a smaller surface membrane, okay? But amoeba is a tiny organism. Therefore, the surface uh, area or membrane is quite large to allow diffusion to what? Okay. So after the food particles that were engulfed by the amoeba has been digested, it diffuses into the, the cytoplasm 
of the amoeba. And after it has diffused in the cytoplasm, the useful ones, the ones that were able to break down into minute, minute particles have been what? Absorbed into the bloodstream of the amoeba. So when it is being absorbed after absorption, then the, the nutrients is then what assimilate. When I say assimilate, assimilation means that distributed. Assimilates the book, distributes the book. So the nutrients that has been absorbed from the food would then be distributed to the various parts of the body for the body to use to what function properly. So assimilation occurs as the fourth stage of feeding. Then the last stage of feeding is what ingestion. Ingestion is when you bring something out of the system. Okay ejection to release something out of the system an example when you want to release feces out of your system the unwanted food that you don't want it comes out of the system by the process of what ejection same thing applies to the what amoeba they all after the amoeba has um, absorbed the important food nutrients the one that it needs to to survive and then those nutrients assimilate into the system. The unwanted ones are then um, taken out or removed through the surface membrane again. I told you that when we're looking at the structure of amoeba, I told you that the cell membrane allows movement of substances into and out of the cell. Okay, so what happens is that the food that the amoeba doesn't want anymore goes or fuses with the cell membrane and then pushes out or comes out through the cell membrane again to the external environment, okay? To the external environment. That is the process known as uh, exocyto, exo, release, endo, uh, 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 taking. Okay, so that is how amoeba undergo certain uh, nutrition. Basically, that is um, something about nutrition in amoeba, okay? Let me pause here. If there's any question concerning what we've done so far, um, just raise your hands and ask. Raise your hands, I'll ask you to unmute yourself and then you can ask your question. Any question? Okay, Elian, your hand is up, so unmute yourself. And uh, Mara, yes. Please, did you say the endoplasm consists of all the organelles in the amoeba? Did I? You say the endoplasm mm -hmm. consists of all the organelles in the amoeba. Yes, the endoplasm contains like the other organelles that makes up. Remember that the endoplasm is a part of the cytoplasm. Do you, do you get that side? The endoplasm. Yes, madam. I told you that the cytoplasm is the, the, the structure within in which other organelles are embedded in. Is that not it? And yes, I madam. said, when you take the cytoplasm, we have two layers, okay? Per the diagram I showed you, you can see that some places are dotted. Is that not it? Yes, madam. And outside the dotted places, that place is plain. There is no dot, 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 dot in there. Can you see what I'm showing you? Where the arrow is? You see that this place, there is no dot, dot. Here, there is dot, dot. Yes, madam. Uh -huh. So this place that has the dot, dot, okay, is the, endocyto the endoplasm. And then the place that have the that doesn't have the dot dot is the what ectoplasm. Do you understand it? Yes, so madam. this ectoplasm is further acting as a supportive layer for the amoeba. Do you get it? The cell yes, membrane madam. is acting as a semi-permeable means to allow movement in and out of the cell. Okay. Now the ectoplasm part of the cytoplasm is acting as a supportive layer. And then the inner part of the cytoplasm, which is called the endoplasm, is where other organelles can be found. Organelles such as the nucleus, mitochondrion, um, and what have you. 
food vacuum, contractor vacuum. You know what organos are? Is that not it? Organos yes, are membrane bounded structures which perform what a specific function. Is it clear? Yes, madam. Is it and you said mm -hmm. the endoplasm contains plasmogel. The second one, I didn't get it. Plasma soul. P L A S. M O, sorry, P L A S M A S O L. Plasma soul. The first, the first layer of the endoderm is called plasma gel, and the innermost layer of the endoderm is called plasma soul. So these are the two layers of the endoderm. Yes, madam. Thank you. Is it clear? Yes, madam. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other so mute yourself yes any other question before we continue any other question okay so we are coming to talk about reproduction in amoeba okay reproduction in amoeba and I said that or on the slide we said reproduction in amoeba occurs only asexually. Amoeba do not undergo sexual reproduction. They only undergo asexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. Now, in amoeba, their asexual reproduction is in two forms, okay, or two types. These two types of asexual reproduction found in amoeba is binary fishing and sporulation. Is it clear? Binary fishing and sporulation. Now, binary fishing occurs when conditions are favorable. When conditions are favorable, binary fishing will occur. But when conditions are not favorable, uh, another form of reproduction occurs known as sporulation. Sporulation means that the production of spores or the release of spores. Okay, so these are the two types of asexual reproduction that occur in amoeba, binary fishing and sporulation. Um, now, binary fishing occurs during favorable condition and then sporulation occurs during unfavorable um, condition. But then amongst these two reproduction, the most common one you can find happening in amoeba is the binary fishing, okay? The most common one you can find is the binary fishing. Now, uh, when we talk about binary fishing, what happens is that in binary fishing, the process is so simple that like an adult amoeba or a parent amoeba, okay, would divide itself into two. When the amoeba grows into a certain size, when the amoeba grows into a maximum size, which is big enough, okay, it divides into two. We are looking at binary fishing. Now, when the, the, um, the parent amoeba divides itself into two, by the process called what? In, in the process of cell division, mitosis, okay? I told you that in cell division, two things occur. Chirokinesis okay, and then cytokinesis okay. When we're looking at cells, we said in cell division, these two processes okay. Chirokinesis, chirokinesis is the breakdown of what nucleus, and then cytokinesis is the breakdown of what cytoplasm. And we said that the chirokinesis uh, normally occurs before cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the last part of division that will occur. So in every division or in a cycle of a division, these two processes must take place. Chiro should take place. Cyto should also what take place. Okay. So now in binary fishing, when the amoeba grows at a certain size, it stops. Okay. And these parent amoeba will change the form to become a, a like something like a sphere. It forms a is that unfortunate? I'm not able to play the video for you, but then I'll, I'll, I'll share the video on the Google Classroom so that you can really appreciate what I am saying, okay? So the parent amoeba attains a spherical position, or let me say it elongates. The, the, the nucleus becomes longer. It elongates itself. 
Now, when it elongates itself, the nucleus then divides. And you all know that the process by which the nucleus divides is, is termed as what? Karyokinesis. Okay, so when the nucleus divides into two, now other organelles which is found in the nucleus will also duplicate because we have double nuclei now. So you must have organelles or let's say the genetic material in each of the what? Nucle nuclei. Okay, now when karyokinesis is, is, is finished or is completed, then you realize that the cytoplasm of the parent amoeba we also have to what divide so that each of the nuclei will be covered or surrounded with what each of the what cytoplasm that has what divided. So at the end of these two division, division of a nucleus and the division of a cytoplasm into two would definitely give birth to what two new daughter amoebae. When amoeba is plural, we say amoebae at e to the back, which is a m. O E B A E is the plural form of what? Amoeba. As you can see, the last point says that two identical amoeba are formed. I am taking the process again. Process of binary fishing. I'm saying that when a parent amoeba grows to a certain size, a maximum size, or when it attains a maximum size, this parent amoeba divides itself it, that the shape of them, but remember that amoeba has an irregular shape. So when it is about to divide, it it, it, it takes a spherical shape. Okay, now it takes a, a spherical shape in order to be able to what uh, divide. Now in the division, first of all, the nucleus must divide, followed by the what cytoplasm, because our knowledge in cells tells us that. At every cycle of cell division, two processes occur. These two processes are karyokinesis and cytokinesis. We said that karyokinesis is the breakdown of the nucleus to form new daughter nucleus. And then cytokinesis is the breakdown of the cytoplasm to form new daughter cytoplasm. So, when the nucleus divides, okay, automatically the other organelles in the system will also duplicate itself so that each of the nucleus will have the exact number of fat organelles because each nuclei is going to form a new amoeba, a new amoeba for you to get two what amoeba. In the same way, the cytoplasm would also divide into two halves, equal halves, to enclose the nucleus. Because you know that the nucleus is found in the cytoplasm, or the nucleus is embedded in the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm will also have to divide into two to form two different cytoplasm to enclose each of the what nuclei that was formed earlier. Now these two divisions will come together to give you a complete cycle of the binary fission. So at the end of the day, two identical amoeba is. I hope we are okay. So that is what happens when it comes to binary fission. Now let's go to the second form of uh, asexual reproduction, which is known to be sporulation. Sporulation. I told you that sporulation simply means the release of spores or the production of spores. Multiple division occur in the system of the amoeba. So at the end of this multiple division, plenty or a lot of spores are released into the system. Okay. Now these spores that are released in the system or the process by which these spores are formed to be released into the system is what we term as well, sporulation. So sporulation is another form of asexual reproduction. Remember, amoeba only undergoes asexual reproduction okay so you are saying that sporulation occurs under unfavorable conditions when conditions are not favorable maybe the temperature is too high there is drought all over food is scarce water is scarce the, the environment is too dry okay 
all these things are environmental conditions which will not favor the amoeba. Therefore, in such a condition, when the amoeba wants to reproduce, it must reproduce via spoliation. Okay, so you are saying that during this condition, what happens is that amoeba assumes a round shape. Remember that when we're looking at binary fish, we said the amoeba will assume a spherical shape. But when it comes to spoliation, the amoeba will assume a round shape or will form like a round structure, okay? And then when it assumes that round shape, because conditions are not favorable, it is going to develop a coat around itself. And the name of that coat is termed as what? Cyst. The cyst is serving as a protective coat. It's like when it is raining and you want to go buy something in town. Because you don't want to get hurt at that point in time, conditions are not favorable for you to go to to go and buy whatever you have to buy. What do you do? You have to you have to protect yourself against that way in order to go and buy the biscuits you want to go and buy. So you are going to wear a raincoat or you are going to get an umbrella, okay? So that umbrella or the raincoat is going to serve as a protective measure for you to be able to go through that rain and come back successfully without wetting yourself. See, that is what is happening here. The amoeba assumes that round shape and then develops something like a coat around it. And the name of that coat is called what? Cyst. So we, are, so we say amoeba forms a cyst around itself. Now, when the amoeba, amoeba forms the cyst around itself, it becomes dormant or it becomes inactive. At that point, any time an organism forms a cyst around itself, it is trying to become what dormant or it wants to become inactive. Conditions are not favorable. If I don't wear the real coat, I will, I will suffer from what? Cold and die off. Okay, so at that point in time, the amoeba puts on the raincoat and becomes inactive, hides itself in that raincoat until the rain stops before the coat is what removed. Okay, so that's what I wrote in the second point. It remains dormant inside the coat until the environment becomes favorable. Now, when the conditions become favorable, after the rain has stopped, after the temperature has become a bit humid or the environment has become a bit humid, the cyst that the amoeba uh, created around itself breaks apart because now conditions have become what favorable. So the cyst bursts and then the organism comes back to its normal life. It becomes active again. Okay, it becomes active again. But remember, when the organism was in the cyst, okay, cell division was still happening. Cells were breaking, spores were being formed in the cyst, just that they were not coming out. So they were multiplying, breaking, 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 multiplying, karyokinesis was happening, cytokinesis was happening, and so many of the spores were formed whilst the amoeba was still in the cyst, okay? So when the cyst was finally, when the cyst finally break apart, and then the, uh, the amoeba came back to its normal division, the, 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 there was a lot of spores produced in the cyst. Because whilst it was in there, it was still dividing, dividing, dividing. So they were dividing, but they were not coming out. So after the rain stopped and then the, the amoeba came out, it came out with a lot of children, a lot of children, which is small, 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 small amoeba. Okay, so a lot of amoeba came out. Now, the spores that came out of the amoeba would gradually also grow because now conditions are favorable. They'll come back to their normal conditions. So they'll grow and each of them will grow into a beautiful new amoeba. Are you okay? So the process in which spores are formed is what we call what sporulation. So sporulation is another form of what asexual reproduction that occurs in amoeba. And this only occurs when conditions are not favorable. Any question? Any question? 
Any question? Yes, Justin. Madam. Yes. Please can okay, you so, go over. Oh, mm -hmm. Please can you go over binary fishing again? Okay. Okay. All right. I'll do that now. Second, I saw your hand up. Alien. Um, it was a mistake. Ah, okay, no problem. All right, so um, back to binary fishing. I said that binary fishing in amoeba is also a form of asexual. I believe you all know what asexual reproduction is. Asexual reproduction involves one parent to produce what new offspring. So we said but, uh, amoeba goes through asexual reproduction through two different means either by means of binary fishing or by means of phosphorylation. And I'm saying that in terms of binary fishing, what happens is that when the amoeba grows into a certain size, the parent amoeba, the one that is going to be divided, the mother or the father, whoever, the parent amoeba, grows to a certain size, it is, it, it is said that when it goes to a certain size, it's so mature that it can produce new ones, okay? So that parent amoeba obtains a spherical shape, okay? It forms an elongated shape or a sphere so that the nucleus in the, in the, in the, in the organism can stretch up to elongate, okay? Now, when the nucleus elongates, mind you that when we're looking at cells or with our knowledge in the cells, we said, in every cell division, two processes occur. These two processes are chirokinesis and cytokinesis. So when these two processes come to an end, then we can say cells have successfully divided, okay? So now, when the parent amoeba, I mean, gets to that size, it elongates, and then the nucleus will divide. Remember that in cell division, chirokinesis occurs first before cytokinesis. There is no way cytokinesis will occur before chirokinesis, no. Chirokinesis comes first, then cytokinesis will occur. And I said cytokinesis is the breakdown of the cytoplasm and chirokinesis is the breakdown of the what, nucleus. So what happens is that the nucleus that was found in the parent amoeba will divide into two to give you two daughter nuclei or two different nucleus. Okay, now after the nucleus have divided into two, the cytoplasm must also divide into two. Okay, remember that all the organelles that are found in the cytoplasm must duplicate itself. Mitochondria must duplicate. Uh, whatever vacuum must duplicate. All the food vacuum, whatever, whatever, whatever vacuum must all what, duplicate. So that you can have two copies of the various organelles. One copy goes to one amoeba, another copy goes to another amoeba. Are you okay? So after the nucleus divides into two to give you two nucleus, the cytoplasm will also break down and divide into two so that each of the cytoplasm will go and what? Surround each of the nucleus that had already what? Divided to form two identical amoebae. That's the right way. Yes, madam. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any other? Any other question? So are you there? Yes, madam, I'm there. Okay. Ask a question. Or should I ask you a question? Uh, madam, I want to ask. Okay. No. Madam, please, I want to ask. Mm -hmm. So in the, post, in the second type of um, reproduction, which is the as... Um, I'm, I'm whereby... The second type the of reproduction which was the sporulation? Look on the slide very well. Sporulation, okay. The sporulation. Uh -huh. Are they amoebae? Are they amoebae also identical? Yes, they are identical. 
Okay. The reason why we are terming it as population is that, listen, I told you that uh, these two types of uh, reproduction, which is binary fishing and then spoliation, they are all asexual reproduction. You know? But when, when occurs when conditions are favorable, the other one occurs when conditions are not favorable. Okay. For instance, if there is lack of food, it is raining. Are you okay? Uh, 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 you know, everything is bizarre. At that point in time, conditions are not favorable for the amoeba to reproduce through binary fishing. So it must be produced by means of our spoliation. Okay? And I'm saying that through spoliation because, because when conditions are not favorable, the amoeba will form, like, will, will assume a round shape and form a covering around itself. That is why I intentionally use the raincoats. That, for instance, it is raining at that point in time, the condition is not favorable. Yet, you need to go to the, to the next shop to go and buy biscuits. Are you okay? You need the biscuit so badly. It is raining. What do you do? You are going to develop a method to be able to pass through the rain and come back without getting wet. Do you understand what I am saying? Uh huh. So when the amoeba realizes that conditions are not favorable, it forms a coat. We call it a protective coat. And the name of that protective coat is called cyst. Are you okay? So when the amoeba forms that cyst around itself, the parent amoeba, yes, when it forms that cyst around itself, okay, it becomes inactive. It becomes dormant. Dormant means that it is dull. It is not working. <laughs> It is not dead too. If I say you are dormant, you are not dead, okay? But you are just not active. You are just sober somewhere. Do you understand it? So the amoeba will be in the system until mm -hmm. when conditions become favorable. Are you okay? Now, when the conditions become favorable, the cyst will now break apart. But then, Whilst the, um, the parent amoeba was in the cyst or was hiding in the cyst, it was replic it was breaking down. Cell division was taking place. The nucleuses were dividing, cytoplasm were dividing to produce pores. Are you okay? Plenty, plenty, plenty amoeba. So after conditions become favorable and then the cyst breaks apart, those pores that were produced in the cyst will also be released into the environment and that spot will grow one day one day or will grow to become an adult amoeba or to become what a daughter amoeba okay so because of the spores that was produced in the cyst that is why this process is termed as sporulation sporulation simply means spores production of spores do you get it are we clear yes madam okay Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Kenneth, I can see Kenneth somewhere. I want you, Cindy. I go check. Cindy. Madam. Yes. Madam. Are we clear? Yes, please. I'm clear. Is everything okay? Yes, I'm cool. All right, then mute yourself again. Okay, so um, I told you that when we started the slide, I told you we'll be looking at, uh, let me see, the, I said we'll be looking at structure of amoeba, mode of nutrition in amoeba, reproduction in amoeba, and then the last part of the slide is going to be osmoregulation in amoeba. Is it clear? Osmoregulation. Osmoregulation. When we talk about osmoregulation, what is osmoregulation? Remember that it's not only amoeba that undergoes osmoregulation. Even human beings we undergo osmoregulation, okay? Whereby we are able to regulate the salt and water content in the body. You know, when the salt, the salt content is too much in the body, it becomes terrible. In the same way, when there's so much water in the system, it also becomes as terrible. So the system is able to control or regulate the amount of what? Um, water and salt content in the system or in the organism. Are you okay? Same happens to us, amoeba. Amoeba also needs to us control or regulate the amount of um, 
salt and water content in the body. Okay, so we are saying that the cell content of amoeba is hypotonic, hypertonic to the surrounding fresh water. Hence, water continues to enter the organism by osmosis. When I talk of hyper, hypertonic solution, South Africa, define it for me. South Africa, are you there? Yes. South, yes. Yes, the uh, is hypertonic solution. The hypertonic solution is when the concentration gradient of the uh, Yeah, I'm listening or oh, we are listening. Yeah, Justin, hold on for me. Let me hear from Sarah and then I'll get back to you. Sarah, are you there or you are lost? Yeah, I'm lost. You are lost? Mm. Find yourself. Mention someone's name to help you find you. Uh. Let someone help you. Okay. Priska. Who? Priska. Priska, are you there? Sarah, you went home. Yes. You went home for only three months and you went to throw my notes away. Okay, Priska, help us. What do you mean? Um, a hypertonic solution. It's a solution with a, a higher concentration of dissolved substances than than the cell. Than the cell. The it cell is, it is compared with yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Justin, your hand was up. Let me hear it from you, and then you can continue. Madam, please. Okay. I was only trying to answer the question you asked. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, is she right? The yeah. answer she gave, are we okay? Is she right? Yeah, yeah, yes, madam. Yes, madam, it is correct. Okay. Then what about isotonic? Okay, Can isotonic okay. solution. Okay. Yeah, just okay, I put, okay, isotonic solution is a solution which has the same concentration of dissolved substances as the cell it is being compared with. Okay, good. And then, Kamasa, help us with hypotonic. Okay, uh, a hypotonic solution is a solution which has a lesser concentration gradient than the uh, organism it is being compared to it. Okay, so you realize that, good, uh, maybe we are still on track. So these are the various types of solution we have. Hypertonic, isotonic, and then uh, hypotonic. Now, uh, we said that in osmo regulation in amoeba, someone should read the first point for us and then try to explain what I'm trying to say. If you really understand hypertonic solution, hypotonic solution, and isotonic solution, and are, I'm saying that osmo regulation is the process of controlling or regulating the amount of salt and water content in the body of an organism, okay? So we are trying to look at how amoeba is able to control the salty content yeah. and then the water content in its system. Do you understand? So now, if you really understand hypertonic solution, somebody should read the first point for me and then try to explain what the first point on the slide is trying to say. Who will do that? Volunteer or volunteer? Madam. Yes. Um, the cell content of amoeba is hypotonic to the surrounding fresh water. Hence, water continues to enter the organism by osmo osmosis. It's this coming. simply means that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the cell content of, am of amoeba is hypertonic to the surrounding fresh water. 
Hence, water continues to enter the organism by osmosis. Mm -hmm. This means that the um, water content in the organism amoeba has a higher concentration than the, the water no. surrounding it. Come again. Read that statement again. If I got you right. Read it again and then come again. Okay. Let's, the cell content of amoeba is hypertonic to the surrounding fresh water. Hence, water con continues to enter the organism by osmosis. It okay. means that the cell content of amoeba is hypertonic to the fresh water. So therefore, it means that the, let's say, the amount of salt uh -huh. content, content in, the, um, in the cell amoeba is higher than the salt content in the surrounding water. Therefore, therefore, as um, so as the um, the organism is being uh, for instance, the organism is just placed in the uh, surrounding fresh water. It means that the organism amoeba will water from the surrounding water will enter the um, amoeba. organism amoeba. Very good, very, very good. That, that's good. It tells you you are really following. Good. So you are saying that because the amoeba is hypertonic, remember when we started the course, I told you that amoeba can be found in fresh water, surfaces of stones, and blah, 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 blah. So we are looking at how water and salt is regulated in the system. And then it is telling us that when you take the system of amoeba, or when you take the cell content of amoeba, it is hypertonic. It means the concentration in the amoeba is higher than that of the what of the cell okay therefore because the amoeba is hypertonic to the surrounding environment or the surrounding water it should be withdrawing water from the what from the system are you okay now as it keeps on withdrawing water from the surrounding into the system what happens to the amoeba what would be the shape of the amoeba or what would be the effect on the amoeba anybody but, um, no, 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 not Cindy, not Cindy, not Cindy. It becomes turgid. It becomes turgid. Turgid. Okay, and then it becomes turgid. turgid. Okay. And then some of us have forgotten the meaning of turgidity. So explain. Hello. Yes, Justin, your hand is up. Yes, let's go. So, madam. Madam, this yes. means that uh -huh. the, the cell wall of the amoeba is fully stretched. Okay. 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 Very good. So this means that the cell wall of the amoeba becomes what? Fully stretched. Okay. Now, when it happens like that, this a lot of water that, is being, that will enter the amoeba must be regulated. And which organ does that regulation? The organ that does that is what we call the contractile vacuum. When you look at the structure, when you cast your mind back to the structure of the amoeba I showed you, you saw a food vacuum and then you also saw contractile vacuum. Is that not it? Uh -huh. So the, the function, and I told you that what the contractile vacuum does is to regulate what or to help in what osmo regulation or to help in controlling the amount of salt and water content in the system, okay? So when the amoeba keeps on withdrawing water to its cell content, it becomes too much, so much in the water that it doesn't have, it doesn't, the cell content is not more balanced because it is taking in too much water, which is not good. I told you that there should be, it should be balanced. The water content should balance with the salty content so that it will be, it will be like a, it will be at an equilibrium okay one should it be more than the other so because of that the contractile vacuum will have to come into the picture will have to come into play okay by extracting excess water in the cytoplasm through to 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 be what uh, released outside the system are you okay so when this contractor vacuum keeps on extracting the excess water 
which is being taken into the system. When it becomes full, when the contractor vacuum becomes full, it then gradually moves into the cell membrane and the cell membrane breaks at a certain part to release the water out of the one of the amoeba. That is how amoeba is able to regulate what its processes. Let me go back, let me explain it again. We are looking at osmoregulation in amoeba. We said that osmoregulation has to do with regulation of water and salt content in the body of the organism. Okay. Now, taking amoeba as a case study, since we are looking at amoeba, amoeba cells, um, amoeba cells content is hypertonic to the surrounding environment, meaning the amount of dissolved particles in the cell is higher than the amount of dissolved particles in the fresh water, okay? Because of that, through the process of osmosis, the amoeba will keep on withdrawing water from the surrounding into the cell content, which will cause the amoeba to be so stretched, okay, or the system or the body to be so stretched. Because we don't want that to happen and we want to maintain an equilibrium, an organ called contractor vacuum will now come into play. This contractor vacuum comes to extract those, if I say something is in excess, it means that you have already gotten the portion you want. This is the leftover. I don't want it again because to have excess. What do I do? I have to dispose it. Do you understand? So the contractor vacuum comes to regulate the excess water in the cytoplasm of the amoeba by extracting all those excess water. Now, when the contractor vacuum extracts all the excess water from the amoeba, that contractor vacuum quickly moves to the surface membrane of the amoeba, okay? And then at that surface membrane, a portion of the membrane breaks up to allow the vacuum, the contractor vacuum, to release the water that is as extracted from the amoeba to the external environment. So the side it keeps on going and going and, and going like that. So the contract when it has released, they realize that okay, now the, the the water and source content is okay, then it relaxes. When the amoeba keeps on absorbing more water, the contractor vacuum come in again extract all the excess water, move to the surface membrane of the amoeba. The surface membrane breaks at a certain point, and then the contractor vacuum releases the water into the external environment, comes back again. When the excess, there's excess water, so it's like a, a cycle. So at every interval, when the contractor vacuum is like, oh, okay, there's excess water, then it goes there to perform its function, and come back, goes there, collects the water, well, it's like it has range, and then, your room is flooded. What do you do? You take a bucket, right? Fetch water. Go and pour it outside. So that the bucket now becomes the contractor vacuum. Fetch that water. Move outside the room. Pour the water away. Come back. You do that until you realize that the room is now okay for you to stay. Do you understand? So at every interval, when there is excess water, the contractor vacuum comes in and play its role and go back. Plays its role and go back. Am I clear? Are you okay? Any question? Yes, madam. Okay. Who is speaking? Yeah, I'm listening so that we can end the class. Any question? Are we all okay? Are we all okay? Or mute yourselves. Yes, madam. Y yes, yes, madam. Okay. Yeah. So yes, any madam. All right. Any question for me? Yes. Any question for me? No, please. Okay. So, um, if there is no question for me, on that note, I'll bring the class to an end. Now, I'm going to 
there's uh, I don't know whether you've been told about a Google Classroom. Is that not it? Unmute yourself and uh, mute yourself and listen to the announcement I want to give. I don't like their feedback. So all of you should mute yourself. Okay. Now I'm going to put um, any necessary assignment on the Google Classroom. Okay. You access the assignments over there, solve them, and send it back to me on the Google Classroom. I will mark them and then send it to everybody individually. I'll mark your work and then send it back to you. If there's any comments, I'll comment on it and then you do the correction and send it back to you. Is it okay? Now, the videos I wanted to show you to, I'll try as much as possible to put it there. If it's not able to be out there, we meet on campus too, I'll show you the video. Is it clear? If there is no other question, then uh, our ne in our next meeting, we'll be looking at paramission. Okay, we are taking the organisms one after the other. So today we have exhausted amoeba. After the class, please go back to the your books and then just revise on whatever I've said so far. I believe some of you, I believe you were taking notes when I was teaching. So just go back to your notes and then revise the notes. On our next meeting, we'll be looking at paramission because we are taking the organisms one after the other. So try and read around Paramecium before our next meeting. I hope it is clear. All right. On that note, I'll see you when I see you.